Sup blokes, Francis here. So, a few of my friends and I have decided to take on the Madness. The Madness is a team-based, 10-mile, 16-kilometer obstacle course boasted as being the toughest course in New Zealand. Now I got to interview Dougal Peters, the mastermind behind the Madness in Auckland and the Mule in Queenstown. We talk about the inspiration behind these courses, we find out what they're all about, we take a look at the course map, obstacle layout, plus a bunch more, so check it out. Oh, good day, Francis. Yeah, I, um, I've always had a love of, sort of um, the different uh, forms of fitness and getting out there, not just running on the flat or, or doing your, your conventional style um, methods of sport. And having had a background in the army and exploring all manner of terrain over the years and taking on obstacle courses, all of a sudden there was a demand for it, or not even all of a sudden, it wasn't being done. And I kept trying to push it to other people and say, hey, somebody should do this down in Queenstown, somebody should do this, because I was busy on other, other products, products, sorry, projects rather. And um, it wasn't happening to the point that I said, sod it, I'm doing this, I'm just gonna build one. So yeah, we set up uh, the Mule, which is a Queenstown-based obstacle course. Um, and now we're setting up the Madness uh, for Auckland. Yeah, they are, um, they are of the similar ilk. They're both all-terrain obstacle courses, and that is basically a distance covered on mixed terrain, rivers, forests, mud, um, you name it, we'll try to incorporate it. The Mule, for example, you actually run up the river. The Madness, you'll swim across it a few times, a different river. Um, and they incorporate as many obstacles as we can put on the land and build and, and, and use natural obstacles. So it's a foot race, but again, we don't like to use the word race, it's a challenge. It's never about the speed, it's about how you do it, how you complete it. And the distance is very, the mule is very much about working your upper body, then your lower body um, progressively. So each obstacle you come to, you've got hopefully that part of your body is a little bit fresher and you can take it on and therefore smash through it. The madness is a little bit more specific in where it's come from in so much that uh, myself and Chris, a, a business partner of mine, uh, he's an ex-Royal Marine from the British Army, I'm ex-British paratrooper. Um, he was regular, I was reserve. And we've taken the best elements of those two units' selection processes, because they're two of the elite units in the British Army, and you have to be selected for them. And we've taken those elements, put them into one 16-kilometer um, course, which is a 10-miler in our minds, being British. Um, and that's what's created the madness, and the fact that that one's very specifically a team event. So the Madness, uh, this is the, the first one this year, 2015 is on uh, September the 19th, which is a Saturday, and they are, that one's held just out towards Wood Hill, northwest of Auckland, 33 kilometers on State Highway 16. So real easy to get to, and that's on a big private farm. That is absolutely fantastic terrain. Every mile is something different, and we utilize it to the, to the full. Um, the Mule is actually run twice a year. We try to do a winter event and we try to do a summer event. The next event is October the 31st. That's what we call the winter event. It's the end of winter. Um, and each and every time we're running the Mule now, this will be the fourth event. So it's only a year and a little bit old. old. Um, each and every event is slowly developing and getting better and better and better. And the good thing about this one is we'll have some of the obstacles from the madness added to the Mule this year to bring it up again, to level that playing field from the fast um, sort of runners to those people who need that all round strength and teamwork. <laughs> we did run the first winter mule in July last year. And we're, during the test phase, uh, myself and a girl called Danny, who is actually the female champion three times now in, in the Queenstown mule, uh, ran it to test test the course because we always we we'll always run it ourselves beforehand. Um, never ask anyone to do anything you're not prepared to do yourself, of course. And we were breaking ice off the obstacles and snow off the top. Three days later, when the actual event happened, the sun had come out and a lot of that had gone. But it was a hardy bunch of just a hundred people took that on, and it was a brilliant event. But obviously, it was more limited by the access to it because it's up a, a farm track and and the fear factor for people was definitely there. So everyone who had turned up embraced it fully and loved it, but we've decided to push it towards the end of winter so that you've got the muddy conditions um, and you've got the icy water, but it's a little bit more accessible. And we don't sell any event on mud. We sell it on obstacles. Yeah. Right.
it will be there. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Um, so what the madness course is, it's, it's what we got. It's a ten miler, which is sixteen kilometres. But on the course, on the map, rather, every mile is shown in diff a different colour. So each mile is sixteen hundred metres and represents a different element of the event. Uh, these events, and so these elements are based on what we talked about, which is the, um, the selection processes. So the first mile, and this, this map here has evolved a little bit, but we can use it to have a look at. The first mile is basically a run. Okay, so that allows the, the start waves to break up a little bit, get a little bit of space, find your ground, and it's associated to what is a basic fitness test in the British Army, um, and in fact the Kiwi Army. You then hit the, the, the mile, the orange mile here, which is a uh, log carry. Hence the teams of four, but we have set it up for teams of two. So you pick up your log, you run up this lovely track, and then into these woods and cross um, a small ditch and back in, drop off the log in the start position. You then hit the next third mile now, um, and this is all walls and cargo net. So wall after wall after wall, cargo net climb, uh, larger wall, cargo net crawl, down into uh, one last large wall before you hit the river mile. Now the river mile is still evolving um, even in these late stages, but it's basically a series of water crossings that are um, balancing on ropes, climbing across ropes, balancing on big timber beams, swimming across. It's not too far, but we have mentioned in the uh, information that you should be comfortable swimming. If you're not, uh, don't be put off because there are ways to avoid those if, if necessary. We'd rather people come out and have a go at the whole event and progress for the next year. Um, going into what is now the fifth mile uh, is this green one here and this is the same on the internet as well on the website and this is all your sort of upper body stuff so you start hitting your monkey bars your hanging hoops your straight poles we've thrown in a couple of the blade walls so they're the ones that are that angled um, either towards you or away from you some if they're away from you a little bit easier if they're towards you you've got to kind of really jump up and get yourself over there and have your teammates pulling you over um, this feeds us back into the sort of central hub of the whole event, which is where you started. And this is where you'll find what's shown over here in the blue, but it's actually back in this area here, this big flat field. And that's what we call the Trinasium. Now, it's based on a specific element of the Parachute Regiment uh, selection process, and it's all to do with height awareness. So it's four different sections of um, different challenges, progressively getting higher. This first year, it's gonna be relatively tame. There'll be some elements that will make people uncomfortable, but it's a good taster. And in between each element, you're doing a 250 minute, uh, meter circuit. Uh, once you've done that, and, and certainly in our mind, when we look at this side of the course, it's, it's kind of your training phase over. You're now going, you're now ready. So you've done six miles at this point. Uh, you're over halfway, you've had your water stations, etc., And you hit the approach to the assault mile. So there's a couple of small obstacles, but it's sort of along a muddy track and up this hill climb here. The hill's a nice gradual hill, but it's a, it's a good viewpoint and it's a significant point in the course. It takes you to the beginning of the assault mile, or what we call the assault mile. The assault mile's all, uh, the course narrows down into your two meter wide obstacles. I've got to mention, along here, all the obstacles are four meters wide. Always designed for at least four people to hit it fast together. So your entire team can move through and because of the start waves being only 60 people, um, we are pretty comfortable that there's not going to be any queuing. So no excuses. If you want to go for it, you can go for it. If you need a rest, that's how your team you know, paces itself. Back up here, you hit the assault mile. And that's, the, the, as I said, the course now is into the two meter wide obstacles. It's smaller walls, it's small, more of the blade walls, it's walls you go through, under, over, obstacles. Um, we've got some crawls in there. We're hoping to get some smoke thrown in. We were looking at getting some overhead fire from the army, um, as in machine guns, uh, blank rounds, but we can't get that, so we might have some sound effects. We just want to try and really amp that up and get a little bit of um, atmosphere in that area, of course. We do know that the neighbor has a tank, and we might talk to them about putting it somewhere. It's not about feeling like you're in the army, it's not a boot camp, but they are specific elements, which is a bit of fun. Um, you then make your way back up to a bit of high ground, uh, some more uh, smaller obstacles up here and head down to what becomes the eighth mile now. Sorry, beg your pardon, the ninth mile. And that's your stretcher carry. So this is where you're picking up in teams of four. It's probably gonna be a slower part of the course. Uh, a stretcher weighing approximately 80 to 90 kg. So it's a human body weight. It's made up of customized water bladders. 
that we can adjust weights. Uh, they are also broken down so you can carry half the weight in a team of two. And you'll, you'll make your way through around the circuit here, which is generally on the same contour, so you're not going too much un, uh, up, up uh, ascent or descent. Uh, but I will tell you now that by that point in the course, you will want some morale and a few jokes up your sleeve to keep your team going. Um, you come in, you, you, you drop the stretcher back down, um, and you come into what is actually just under a mile because some of these other ones are slightly longer, slightly shorter. Uh, a couple of big obstacles down the track here, across a, a big sand pit area, cross one river crossing, and you come into the big finish. And by that point, you will be, um, you will have achieved the madness. You will have beaten the madness, and you will have taken on the madness 2015. Uh, well, the Jefferson, um, has come on board. It's, it's a brand new bar for Auckland. It's the, um, the most stocked bar, I think it's 528, so I'd have to confirm, 528 whiskies on the shelf, which is the most in New Zealand. Um, a fantastic location, um, got just the right feel for what we want, and uh, we're friends with the owners, and they've come on board and become the sponsor, if you like, for the um, team prize. And the team prize is gonna be a bottle of the Jefferson whiskey, um, and obviously uh, an association with the bar. Now that's in itself is a lovely item, but what we like about this is it's more unique, it's different, it represents uh, you're either toasting or there's some success or there's some element of remembrance in a glass of whiskey. Um, so we think it's something just to add a little bit of difference to the event, a flavor. We never really focus on prizes or medals. We like to, um, do spot prizes where possible and, and give a first prize um, if it's appropriate. And we've done, we've had chainsaws as prizes in the first mule event, and that was unique and different and, and, and associated by the fact that it was a can do item. You had to just get out there and, and get the job done, which a, a chainsaw does. Uh, with the whiskey, the Jefferson whiskey, um, it's the same ideas that you, you can come back, have a drink with your friends, the team that you, you, you completed the course with, and, and just enjoy it and relax. And you've, you've earned what. I consider it to be a special moment, you know? We don't all go out and drink bottles of whiskey at a time, you enjoy uh, the flavors each and every time. So yeah, really chuffed to have these guys uh, supporting us on that. The best way to stay current with it is probably our Facebook page, which is Mule NZ. Um, but we are running the blog on the website, and that is uh, www.mulenz.com and we've got the various pages the madness is one of those the mule is another and there's a registration page on there as well plus the contact page which is great because we are getting a lot of um, questions advice um, requested etc which we're always trying to personally respond to um, and there's a blog that will will update photos and sort of where we are progress facebook's a good immediate um, feedback and, and info gathering site once you once you're registered um, so yeah www mulenz.com I should remember that shouldn't I? <laughs> cool. No worries, thank you. NZ blokes. <laughs>